Hey everyone, Sparky Sorensen here from Sparky's Video Productions. What I'm doing today is I'm going to tell some of you guys how to simplify the in-ear mix for drummers that don't travel with their own PA and they're having to deal with house sound guys or bartenders that run sound or girlfriends that run sound or whatever. Um, you're going to come into a lot of situations where you come in and say, oh, well, I'm on in-ears, and you're going to hear a sound guy say, oh, well, we're not set up for that. Well, they are. It's very simple. It's as simple as unplugging one cable and plugging in your own cable. And now today, I'm going to talk to you about how to do that easily, simply, and affordably. All right, so with that being said, first and foremost, you're going to need a set of in-ears. These are the Shure 215s. You can get them online anywhere for around a hundred bucks. Um, for the money, they're the best bang for your buck by far. Just like any other earbuds, you just put them around behind your head, stick them in your ears, and you're done. So now that you got your ears, next thing you need is a soundboard, a tiny little mixer. So let's wrap this up and go over to that part. All right, so here we are. We're at our little mixer. These are uh, Shure wireless in-ears. You can spring for these if you want, or you can just run hardwired, which I'll talk about here in a second. But uh, if you want to run ears and you want to be able to move around, you're going to need a system like this. Go online. You can find a bunch anywhere from three or four hundred bucks on up for a good system. This is the Shure. Uh, not really sure which model it is. I don't know. I don't care. It works great. Like 400 bucks. All right, so now we've got our little soundboard. This is a little bigger than what you need, but this is what I've had for a long time, and this is what I use. Um, I run my kick drum into it, so I split my kick. I run the kick, and then the PA gets the kick, so I can turn my kick up and down as I like. Then I run my mix over here, which comes from the PA, which we'll go over here in a minute. Then I run my click, and I can turn my click up and down, which is also, uh, you can split to the PA too, that way if your whole band is on ears, they can have the click too, so if songs start out with just the guitar or whatnot. And then my crash, crash, and ride. I split my cymbals and run those into my ears too, because I crank them, because that makes me hit them softer when I'm playing smaller venues, and you don't kill your band or the crowd with a lot of brass. So here's your little board. Just take this, set it next to you on a road case, a drum case, set it on the club speaker, or whatever. So here's my 15-inch monitor that is a powered monitor, which powered monitors I love for two reasons. A, um, you don't need to lug around power amps or anything like that, and B, you can take your line input and take it right out of the amp and plug it right into your board because it's not powered. Um, a lot of people don't travel with monitors, a lot do. Uh, if you're going you know, to go ears, you don't need the monitor. So you get to the club, set up your drums, now you got your board right next to your drums and you want to run ears, okay? Well, in this scenario with the powered monitor, all you do is unplug the line out of the back of the monitor and plug it into your mix channel, okay? But my mix channel is a quarter inch and I'm dealing with an XLR, which is why always, always carry plenty of these, okay? This is an adapter that goes XLR to quarter inch, okay? Boom. Now my monitor mix is in my board, okay? Anything that he's gonna send to the monitor, I have now. So you got that, and now you need to run your ears out. You can do a few options. If you're running hardwired, then you're just going to get a little adapter like this. This is a quarter inch to an eighth inch adapter. Plug this into the phone's jack and then get another thing at Radio Shack or whatever is just a telephone cord that is eighth inch male to eighth inch female. Now you fire this into there. You take this over by your throne and you plug your earbuds into it. Okay, boom. 
there you go. You got your monitor mix in your ears. Simple, okay? But now, well, I want to run click too. Well, that's easy, okay? You can't really see it, but right on the other side, I don't know if you can see it now, barely, okay? So right here is my click. Okay, I use the Boss DB90, used it for years, love it. So now I've got my click, and this is just a quarter inch instrument cable. You run out of your click, and then here's my quarter inch cable right here that I'm going to run into my click line. Okay, boom, I've got my click. Okay, easy as that. All right, I'll talk about splitting all the instruments and everything else later if you want to go that route. That is, you know, a couple of ways you can do that is you can split it with a split snake, which are expensive for good ones, or you can do the other way, which isn't really recommended, but you can get Y cables. You can split a few things off. Um, what I used to do a lot is bass amps have a couple of different outputs on the back, or um, another thing I would bring is I bring my own DI box. That way you can technically split a signal with a DI box. I can plug my bass in, run my bass out, and then my bass player can just go straight to the PA. So you can do that and run bass if you want to be able to adjust your bass you know, on the fly so you don't have to bug the sound guy or whatever. Okay, so there you go. That's the simple setup. Run in ears and a click. Next, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a more involved in-ear monitor system that I use and I love. Alright, welcome back. This time, I've got my personal in-ear rig right here, and I also have a lot more light in my face. Uh, what we're going to do now is talk about if you want to split everything and run your own complete, dedicated in-ear mix. Um, what I did forget to mention last though is if the club doesn't have powered speakers you can't just take the plug from the speaker and plug it into your board because it's powered and it's going to blow stuff up. So what you need to do is just follow that cord to wherever it comes from which is going to be a power amp and then go from the power amp to the back follow that cord and it's either going to go to a return on a snake or it's going to go to the monitor board or if they're running front of house from the side of the stage it's going to go to the board so easiest thing to do is just find your monitor mix on the board and it's probably going to be a quarter inch so you run your quarter inch cable from the board all the way over to your little board and you're in okay but what I've got here right now this is my Mackie 1608 digital board it's awesome I can control it from an iPad I can control it from my phone I can control it in the middle of the show. I can save scenes, so if I play a bunch of different venues, I can just call up the venue and it's set to where it was last. It's awesome. I also have an antenna here because I have my in-ears built in. I have the Sennheiser um, high-end model. Let me see if there's a number. The EW300s, okay? So I use the Sennheisers in this one and here's my pack right here. Okay, and then I just take my earbuds and go from there. So let's say you're running your own dedicated mix. You've got your split snake. You plug all your lines in, kick, snare, hi-hat, tom, and so on into your split snake. One hose goes to the house sound and then one goes to you. So here's your tail right here. Plug it in just like any other board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. Kick, snare, hi-hat, tom, tom, whatever. Okay, so now you've got all your own stuff on the board. You've got your bass, guitars, your vocals, everything. And now you just run your out into your ears and you're good to go. That's a lot more expensive, a lot more complex way, but I have mine in this nice road case, completely self-contained. I've got drawers on the front where I keep all of my stuff. I've got a drawer on the bottom where I keep all my cables, extension cords, everything. This is going to be for more of your bands that are self-contained. Now, self-contained is where bands travel with their own microphones, their own cables, everything up until the snake where they plug into the house sound. Or if they bring their own PA, then they're 100% contained with their own system. Okay, self-contained is awesome 
for a few reasons. A, it's uh, less of a nightmare for a sound guy because sometimes you're dealing with a sound guy that's really good and he's awesome, no problems there. Other times you're dealing with a sound guy that manages the bar and just so happens to know how to push faders up and down. Um, those are the guys that are clueless to a lot of things. They might mic instruments wrong, they might use the wrong mics on instruments, and so on. So being self-contained, which most of the bands I've been in have been self-contained, it's awesome. Everybody buys their own mics. You have you know, a bucket full of cables, so everybody uses their own cables and everything, and you're gonna get the same sound every night because your guys are using the same mics, they're doing the same placement, they're doing the same everything, so sound check is a breeze. You very rarely have to adjust anything, and when you do, it's just slight adjustments, mainly on the vocals, depending upon how the room sounds and stuff like that. So here's my totally self-contained in-ear rig. Also on the back I run my own um, internet router. So I run my own internet signal so I can control it from the iPad right here or I can have a separate iPad that uh, I can have in my hands and I can control my mix. And then I've also got right here a little power strip on the side so I can plug in like click or recharge batteries or whatever. Another big thing, rechargeable batteries. I always have rechargeable batteries and a battery charger handy. I have multiple sets of batteries so while I'm using one set another set is charging and then you just rotate them. Saves you a lot of money and if you have full batteries they're never gonna die in the middle of a show. Biggest thing I hate is you know having to stop in between songs while someone replaces the batteries in their ear pack. That's annoying, it's amateur, it should never happen. Uh, anyway, that's my in-ear system. And then the simpler system, like I showed you, um, it's very easy, you just need a board, a set of ears, a couple of cables, and you're ready to go. Or you can go the more expensive route, spend thousands and thousands of dollars, but you have a kick-ass in-ear rig. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, email me right here. I'm going to put the email address there later. Uh, email me any questions. Um, if I forgot anything, you know, I didn't really script this out. I just kind of went on the fly because I can. So there you go. That's In-Ears for Drummers, Volume 1, Series 1, Take 1. Anyway, Sparky's Video Productions. Thank you.